Looks like there are some messages on the answering machine. Let's see. I just wanted to update you. I still don't have an open spot in the facility for your tests, but I'll be free if you want to cash in your new reward. You know I'm busy, so this is your chance for your date. If you even still want to go through with it, take it or leave it. I don't care much either way. Wow, what a way to ask someone out on a date. In any case, you know where to find me. I guess the choice is mine. Nothing going on today. Guess I can do whatever. Let's go on the date. <laughs> I'm just on time. Where is she? Hello, hello. What's this? Looks like a message. Something came up at the last second. Wait for me. It shouldn't be too long. I guess at the last second is meant in the literal sense here. Or she could have just called me. I guess we're playing the waiting game then. Okay. Let's see who shows up. Okay, it's been like an hour and my patience is slowly but surely running out. Let's wait. I've already waited this long. I guess I can wait a little bit longer. I'm not sure who the world record holder for the most patient person is, but now I feel like a contender. Still no sign of her though. Uh, let's go into the lab. Alright, I'm going to score myself some sweet lab equipment. <laughs> That's the least she can do after making me wait. Or maybe I'll just wait inside. Standing around here is getting rather tedious. Alright, let's just go in. Yo, pushing the door does nothing, neither does pudding. Guess I'm out of options. Yo, what's this? At the bottom of the door, a corner of an envelope was noticeably sticking out. Uh... Let's have a look. Take it. Putting at the corner, I was now holding the envelope in my hands. Well, I've got to pass the time somehow, yeah? Let's see. Dear Anna, appointments for the next month's treatment plan, Dr. Valido. I probably shouldn't be looking at this. Quickly, I put the letter back into the envelope and pushed it through the gap in the door. Is she, is she ill or something? Oh, I've got an achievement called Snoop. Yeah, I shouldn't have looked at that. What are you looking at? A beautiful door. Where have you been all this time? Reading comprehension might not be your strong suit, because my note clearly said I'd be back soon. Note to self, the word soon now refers to a span of over two hours when waiting for scheduled appointments. Has it really been that long? It has. It certainly didn't feel like it. It totally did. Alright, sorry for making you wait. Good. Uh, You better be. Um, Let's just go. Losing track of time happens to the best of us. Let's be nice. Happens to me all the time. I guess we missed our movie. Can't we see the late screening or something? That was the late screening. The theatre's closed now. Maybe we could reschedule it. That won't work, at least not for me. Today was the only day I could leave early. I won't have another chance anytime soon. So what do we do? Maybe the coffee place is still open. I don't know. I guess it's better than nothing. Okay. Another coffee. Now where are we? Some alleyway. Yeah, it's closed. Everything's closed. That's just peachy. Why do you keep working so late anyway? It's because what I'm doing is important. You're doing cancer research, yeah? And who told you that? Damien. I stopped by your lab some time ago. You weren't there. That shard-born bastard. What else did he tell you about me? Nothing much. The whole thing wasn't really about you anyway. I see. Okay, sounds like you two don't get along that well. That's the understatement of the century. Being trapped in a small room with the likes of him for hours on end every day is a scenario born of a sick mind with the intention of making me suffer as much as possible. It certainly doesn't make my research any easier. Stress probably doesn't help you neither, and it's not worth jeopardising your health over. Don't overwork yourself, you can't save anyone if you're dead. If I don't find a cure, no one else will. No one else can. Besides, I was only late today because I got your stupid blood work ready. You got the test results? Yeah, want to know what I have to say about them? Sure, hit me. Okay, how much do you know about genetics? This is going to get deep, isn't it? A little bit, I guess. Alright, I'll put it into words that are easy for you to understand. Yeah, thanks very much. Okay, here come the words. To start off, I found that on average, about 90% of your genes are homologous to our, spe our species' genes. That might seem like a lot. To put that into perspective, about 50% of your DNA is also shared with fruit. To further elaborate, you and your human neighbour back home are probably around 99.9 .9 genetically similar. If you compared the various sentient species we have here to each other, they would probably be about 95-97% to 97 similar. As for what exactly all of this tells us, although a match of 90% sounds like a lot, it's not as much as you might think. Still, for two beings from different worlds altogether, that's quite remarkable. Beyond DNA, the biggest similarity between us is the brain structure, but that's not surprising considering our high level cognitive abilities. That was the prize maverick though. 
What do you mean? Does she not know him? He doesn't seem to like humans very much. I'm sure he'll be displeased to know how similar we are. Oh, he doesn't like anyone though. He's just like me in a way. Yeah, you two make a great couple. Wow, you're a little late for that. I'm already his ex-girlfriend. Oh shit. <laughs> how did that go? Uh, Not how you might think. It actually went pretty well, for a while at least. But in the end, we both got too absorbed in our own jobs until we realised we drifted apart too much and agreed it would be better if we just broke up. Okay, so they had a, a decent breakup. Fair enough. I still respect him for the work he does. I mean, we even used to solve crime together. I'd be in the lab running tests, and he'd be out on the field chasing after the perps. Good times. I guess nowadays he just chases after me. What? <laughs> I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say that. But if you know him, maybe you can help me out. I certainly can't help you out if you don't tell me what's going on. Alright, it's just between us though. <laughs> sure, whatever. Maverick's convinced that I'm an accomplice of a crime. He made a point of telling me that he's searching for proof to legally arrest me or worse. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Really? It's nothing if you can't find any proof, if it don't exist. Still, it doesn't feel nice to be threatened and stalked, especially by someone like him. That's just him. He gets way too into it once he sets his sights on something. Yeah, I did notice that. It's his job. What do you expect? I don't know. I wish he'd just leave me alone. He wasn't always like this, you know. A couple of years ago, he was assigned to this one case. Ooh, this one case. Flashbacks. He was still relatively new on the force, young and eager to help. Then reality came crashing down on him. There was a serial killer who shook up the whole town. The victims were apparently eaten. We later found out that the killer's actions were the result of a degenerative disease, which brought his feral nature to the foreground. At that point, he was just a wild animal, turned into a cannibal that hunted under the shadow of the night. Wow. Everyone in town was up in arms, terrified that they'd be next. The police did everything they could, a curfew was instated and patrols guarded the streets at night, and then they found him munching on his fifth victim. Poor little Maverick was not prepared for what he would find. Hmm, Maverick got a bad backstory. Alright, here's the, here's the flashback, stand back Maverick, I'll handle this. Miles, oh is this someone you know? It was his brother, oh shit! Step away from the body, Miles. Miles couldn't comprehend their words and only saw rivals who wanted to take away his prey. Oh, his brother's the murderer. Shit. And he wasn't about to let go of it without a fight. Oh! Miles raised his head from his kill, blood dripping from his maw. The officer's breaths were smothered by the deadly stillness of the night. Fangs bared, the feral dragon snarled and stood strong in front of his meal, prepared to protect it from the two who intruded upon his territory. Whatever this is, Miles, it's over. Don't make it worse for yourself. Yeah, this guy's gone full feral. Oh my god. In an instant, Miles was upon Bryce. They clashed in the flurry of teeth and claws. Miles had the advantage with his small frame and quick movements, and Bryce could not get a clear hit in. It all happened so fast that Maverick didn't know what to do. They rolled on the ground, and Bryce ended up on his back. As helpless as a turtle, Miles pinned him and clamped his jaws onto his neck. Bryce's claws were the only thing preventing Miles from biting down, and they were slipping, slick with blood and quivering with fatigue as he tried to push him off. For a brief moment, Bryce thought he'd meet his end when the jaws suddenly relaxed and he was able to dislodge them. When he looked up, he saw that Maverick had managed to get Miles from behind. He bit through his brother's neck from above. Blood flowed from Maverick's jaws and over Miles' lifeless body. Bryce had been saved, but the young dragon wore a wide-eyed, empty stare. Wow. Maverick blamed himself for not taking better care of his brother. He knew Miles had problems and was taking medication for it, but he wished he could have done more to help him. The medication wasn't the right one, by the way. Maverick takes solace in the fact that he was able to save Bryce, but he's never been the same ever since that incident. Now he scrutinises everyone and everything. I'm not sure how that's supposed to help me. It doesn't, but now you know why he is the way he is. It's not unusual for him to act like this, so you might just have to wait it out. Anyway, let's get back to your test results. Since you're so interested, did you want a copy of them? Yeah, appreciated. No problem. I heard you also wanted Reza's blood. Of course, I invited him over too, but that's before you arrived. And I thought what we had was special. Oh, it is. Reza was too stuck up to agree to anything. You wouldn't even participate in an exhilarating round of trivia board games? Not even that, can you believe it? I can almost see the sarcasm dripping from your mouth. 
Still, it's kind of a shame. It would have been interesting to compare your blood to his. What a shame indeed. Let's just enjoy a romantic date in the back alley of a coffee shop. Okay. Unless you want to take this somewhere else. Ooh. Don't you like hanging around in dirty back alleys? Uh. Okay, I prefer some place inside. <laughs> hey. I bet you've never been on the date in an alleyway before. I haven't. Not sure I ever wanted to though. Where's your sense of adventure? Oh, hang on. There it is. Yes, I can feel the adventure kicking in right now. I'm getting kind of hungry. I figured we'd be having our meal on our date. What, can't you go for a few hours without having to stuff your face? I could offer you a handful of dirt, if that's to your taste. I'll pass. I'm afraid that's all we have on the menu. Unless, well, I know one place that never closes. Let's go there. Sure. Okay, after several minutes of walking and then led me to the outskirts of town, we arrived at a farmhouse. On one side, fields stretched through the horizon, and on the other side, there was lush green hills with fenced populations of animals. What kind of restaurant is this supposed to be? Self-serve. <laughs> you're a bad girl, Anna. I'm no thief. Ooh, so it's down that yacht. You're a bad girl. I know. <laughs> How well can you hunt? Me? Even if I knew how, it's not like I have any equipment here. Equipment? What a sissy. What? You got hands and teeth. What more do you need? I ain't gonna bite something's throat out. A long range weapon would be nice. Like fire. I suppose even you could make use of that. Alright, since I'm apparently the only one capable of acquiring food, I'll be right back. Anna walked over to a fence enclosure of animals that reminded me of sheep. She crouched and screeched herself through the bars, after which I lost sight of her. Waiting game 2.0, start. It only took a couple of minutes for her to return, dragging one of the animals behind with her now blooded jaws and hands. Oh my god! Dinner's ready, what the fuck? <laughs> what kind of animal is this? It's called a mouflon. Oh, it's kind of like a sheepy or a ram or something. Anyway, do you have a part you prefer? See how nice I am? I'm even letting you choose first. This is the strangest first date. <laughs> or is this second? I don't know. Uh, rump, offal, anything, I'm not hungry. Let's go for the rump. I'll buy that booty, no problem. Using one of her claws, she skinned the dead mouflon and divided it into various pieces. Do you want yours grilled or raw? Grilled. Unless prepared properly, raw meat carries a significant risk of diseases for us. How inept can your species even be? You can't even hunt on your own, and you need tools and help at every step. You don't even have claws to cut things up. I'm not sure how you could ever survive in the wild. Seriously, what god did you piss off to end up like that? <laughs> evolution. E. I I guess after millions of years of evolution, nature decided that we didn't need those abilities anymore. Instead, we got very articulate hands and arms, and our upright stance. Those things let us do many other things. Like what? Who builds everything in your society? Who's responsible for the delicate tasks? Like assembling electronics, manufacturing, cooking, bartending. That's mostly us, the runners. We got proper hands after all. Now compare your arms to mine. Ours are longer and have way more mobility. Especially our fingers, they have an incredible amount of articulation. The difference between you and me is about as big as the difference between you and another of your species. Just imagine what we could do with our advantages. Oh, you think you can school me? Sure I can. <laughs> Don't get cocky. We've overcome the limitations of ind individual species with all of our technology. Actually, we have technology back home that's far superior to yours. Oh wow. I'd love to see it, though we've already gathered plenty of information on your tech from the databases contained in the PDA. What will you do when we catch up? If you get there, we'll see. She opened her maw wide before a liquid shot from both corners of her mouth and onto the ground below the parts of the mouflon she had prepared. After a few seconds, the liquid burst into flame heating up our dinner. Neat trick. I bet you wish you could do that. That would be a wicked call. <laughs> Who even says that? Alright, it comes in handy. How does that work anyway? Does it ever burn your mouth? No. They're actually two different components. They only catch fire when a sufficient quantity of both is present. Cool. Got to mix the juices, kind of. Alright, let's cook the meat. Okay, cooking the meat with the bloody face stuff. You, you might want to wipe that off. Okay, whatever. Okay, we're cooking. Campfire cooking. 
I guess the date's going okay. It's a bit unusual. The flames weakened and grew smaller until they went out, revealing steamy, appetising pieces of meat. Himself. I grabbed a piece, but dropped it as soon as I felt the heat on my fingertips. Yeah, it's hot. It was on an open fire. Can't take a little heat, huh? Too bad. Unaffected by the temperature, she took a piece in her hand, tore a chunk out of it with her teeth and started chewing. I guess your scales are a good insulator. Evidently so. How does it taste? Just wonderful. Stolen goods always taste the best. I can already picture the old farmer reduced to tears after he discovers one of these precious mouflons is gone. Wow, she's kind of evil, isn't she? Uh, you're a wild one, Anna. <laughs> Thanks, I could teach you a thing or two. I think it should be cool enough for your sensitive little fingers by now. Carefully, I grabbed one of the pieces, which by now had indeed cooled down enough for me to not get burnt anymore, and I took a bite. It was a little bland, I had to admit, but not bad for something that was alive less than an hour ago, and prepared in the wild. How do you like your mouflon a la Anna? Not bad. I've got to say. Especially at that price. How often do you just go out and hunt on your own? Only when necessary, or when I feel like it. I still go on fancy restaurants because I can afford it, but they don't mean much to me. For me, it's all about the experience, and one isn't necessarily better than the other. Okay, it was unusual but fun. I can see your point. Anyways, I'm full. Me too. We had like one piece of meat each, come on. There's still plenty left over. What are we going to do with it all? Leave it here. Hey, maybe the old farmer will help himself to it. Okay, won't this attract predators or something? So what? They need to eat too. We should probably leave before that senile has-been wakes up from his evening nap. Yeah, let's leave. Okay. <laughs> well, that was interesting. Wait a minute, i got something for you. What you got? Here you go, your test results, black on white. Thanks, but did you really need to spend all that extra time getting this done today? I just wanted to get it over with when I had the chance. Maybe you should start with thinking about not working so late on a regular basis. It might do you some good. Why do you think so? I'm just saying that if it usually gets as bad as it did today, that's not a good sign. I just didn't pay attention to the time, but I guess that's because I barely go out anyway, and I didn't even think about watching the clock. Alright, point taken. Okay, so what are you going to do? I'll think about it. You know, now that this date is officially over, if I don't have overtime every single workday, I could fit you in for your end of the deal. Of course you didn't forget about that. I'll let you know the details, or just call me if I forget. Sure. 